What's going on guys? Vic VP back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're looking at the ultimate touch edition build ever made and it's going international. This one is Project Dubai. Yes, you heard it right. We are going international, but this is not the first international build or order to ever go out. I mean, I've been doing this for years, seven years, and not to mention the first ever international order went out to Dublin. And that is what deemed my business name, Game Case Arcades. I did send out a Game Case, the portable arcade, out to Dublin, talking maybe about seven, six or seven years ago via eBay. So I have a quite a handful, literally maybe again, a handful, five or six bills that went out international. This one is pretty intense and it's a very interesting story on how it basically came about. Now, if you've seen in the past videos, you've saw my Mega Touch and the discovery of what is needed for the Touch Edition to work. That video went out and then I, I probably got a good maybe eight or nine emails asking a lot of questions on the Touch Edition stuff, whether if I do just the hard drives and if I do complete builds and all that. And in one of those emails, is the customer from Dubai. Uh, it did start out with emails, then we went into Instagram. And I gave him a heads up automatically. I said, listen, you're in Dubai. I don't know the cost of shipping. So we'll figure out a build and everything, but just understand that if I start this build, I don't know what the cost of shipping is. So that's the risk you take. And he understood it fully. The big thing is though, that he did have a lot of certain requests and requirements for this build. I'll go through the entire build process. I'd rather start with that and then we'll talk about the actual build itself. Really, he sent me an email and he was looking at the Touch Edition and we were going back and forth. He was really focused on Bluestacks, which is the Android emulator. He liked everything else, like the pinball and the PC games and the slot machine stuff, but Bluestacks was a very big deal. And in my past videos, I've used a lot of older all-in-one builds I mean, older talking like Windows 7, Windows 8 builds, where you can find them kind of cheap on eBay for about 300 bucks. The only thing about those builds though is that they're old, number one, the specs in them are low. And when it comes to blue stacks, those specs on old hardware like that, it doesn't jive. It, it, does, it works, but blue stacks takes like a minute to load, it takes too long. So me and Marsh were going back and forth on a couple ideas on his build. I originally wanted to give them an all-in-one PC. Modern day, go to Micro Center, get an all-in-one PC, but they are pretty expensive, and this is what's gonna be kinda of weird in this video. You're looking at around maybe twelve to $1,400 for an all-in-one. Basic spec'd out, i5, maybe eight gigs of RAM, and 512 SSD. And we were going back and forth, and you know, in the beginning I understood it as that was too expensive, but when you hear the pricing on this, you kind of think to yourself, what the hell happened? Um, I think honestly why we went with this build is that he did have a very big concern as far as getting the screen to go from horizontal to vertical. That was a very big deal. That's why I think we didn't go with a regular micro center all in one. Let me put the camera down so I'm not too shaky. So again, like I said, you're gonna like, you're gonna hear especially like the pricing or the spec out on this Essentially, this right here, what you're seeing is more than the $1,400 price tag I mentioned about the all-in-one from Micro Center that I found. Um, so there was, again, a couple of concerns when it came to Raj's build. He definitely was looking for something that the screen rotated because he did watch my Blue Stacks video where I was playing Mario Run and I had the stand that's on this now and you're able to switch from horizontal to vertical in Blue Stacks. So again, a regular all-in-one, it's not on a stand, it's kind of like on its stylish stand, where it's just like two legs and you can't rotate, you can't spin it. Um, so I think that's really why we went with this. And there's obviously a couple of other add-ons. The other big thing also was the screen size. I think right now is a good time that we'll go into the actual specs of this build. But basically, just so you guys know how it started is it started out with going back and forth on emails, trying to find number one, an affordable route. Uh, and then it basically turned into, I want this Vic and whatever the customer wants, whatever the customer gets, that's how I run. 
Now again, also keep in mind because a lot of people do ask me this, I build to order, number one, I don't have any of these in stock. So you message me, I always build to order, I'll never have stock, especially same thing when it comes to arcade cabinets. I never have stock because of artwork and specific details and all that. So alongside being built to order, I do also try to tell customers and give customers a lot of options, give whether it's the most affordable, cheapest route, or if it's the most expensive route. The real big thing is you as a customer, you have to tell me what you want, and I will give you my best, best answer. If you're looking for hyperspin builds or launch box builds and you want to run PS3 and Xbox 360 emulation and you want to run 4K 120 hertz, I'm going to tell you that you can't do that with a Dell Optiplex. So, you know, you're reaching for the stars, but you want to use a minivan to get there. That's, that's what I'm trying to get at. So again, when this build started, I did give them a lot of options and we ultimately landed with this. Now, in all honesty, this, I'm dubbing it. This is like the ultimate, this is like insanely specked out. It, when I tell you insanely specked out, it's insanely specked out. It is way far exceeding what is needed to run touchscreen software. So I think he's also kind of used this PC for actual gaming. I don't think he's gonna use it just for touchscreen gaming because again, the specs on this Intel Nook are insane. And it's kind of cool the way it's set up on camera. You don't see it. I'll bring you back or I'll do B-roll right now. You'll see the Intel Nook. I thought these Nooks, N-U-C, I thought the Nooks or the Nooks, whatever you want to call them, I thought they were small. I've seen in the past small ones that like fit in your hand, almost like Raspberry Pi sized. This is not. Uh, this is this is kind of beefy. Um, it's it's a full blown PC. This one is not your traditional Nook. It's crazy that while I was buying all the parts from Amazon, he we were thinking that we were gonna put the Nook on the back of the stand using this mount. And you can kind of see like, this is the mount for the TV. We were assuming that the NUC was this size. And uh, it's not, it's obviously not. It is a beefy PC. That is a, that is a mini desktop. That's not, and again, NUCs are considered mini desktops. When you're talking mini desktop, to me, it's, it fits in the palm of your hand, Raspberry Pi size. This thing is almost a mini ITX build, is what I would say. That's definitely a mini ITX build. So that's number one things that we were looking at, Nux. And he actually sent me the link from Amazon. He goes, Vic, I want this one. He sent me the link to the Nux. I said, you sure you want that? He goes, yes, I want that. And that was it. I ordered it. Let me give you details on this Nux. So this is the box it came in. And when I saw this arrive at my house, I was like, oh, shit. This isn't the, the NUC that I thought we were gonna get. Um, so it is an Intel NUC 9 Extreme Kit. I have the Amazon description here. This is the Ghost, uh, Ghost, Ghost Skull Canyon Extreme Gaming Box Elite Business Desktop. This is running a quad core i5, 64 gigs of RAM, and two terabytes SSD drives. Yeah, that's what's in this, is 64 gigs of RAM and two terabyte SSD drives. It's insane. That's just the NUC on that. Again, you could look up pricing on the NUC. That, that NUC right there was expensive. As far as the screen on this, it is a 24 inch Plan R 1080p high resolution touchscreen. Totally touch from edge to edge, the whole thing is touchscreen and customer requested because he did see blue stacks and he did see golden tea he wanted a keyboard mouse combo with a trackball there's a lot going on in this build and it's honestly it's pretty nifty the keyboard and the mouse are definitely very cool very handy the screen is beautiful especially on the vertical to horizontal stand um, that we found and there is your ultimate touch edition. I mean, again, the specs on it alone are just totally outrageous on this one. So again, I am expecting that this customer with this build and the specs on this build, I don't see this being only used for touchscreen games. I do have a feeling that he's gonna be using this for his regular casual gaming because again, it is specced out. This build is insane. Now it's pretty cool. The touchscreen is very responsive, so we could run the touch software that I have, which is STFE, 
And again, it has all the games on it. When I was building this, I made sure I sat down and I made sure every single game launched. I made sure everything was smooth because again, I always do that for all the customers. I always do, I'm always big on testing, but the real big thing was because this whole Windows update, I wanted to make sure every single game worked. So now real quick, the main reason I do want to show off, because again, it is a touch screen, touch edition. So I've made many videos on this, but I do want to launch BlueStacks because number one, the big thing on this build is that you can see how fast BlueStacks launches, number one. From my other videos, and again, using older components, you can really see the 64 gigs kick in on this. So it's definitely pretty cool. I'm going to launch Golden T um, just to show off the trackball here. So BlueStacks again is your Android emulator. If you hit F11 on the keyboard, you do go full screen. There is no option on the actual edges to go full screen, you must press F11. So again, with this cool idea with the trackball and the keyboard, you could either you know touch ahead, but we'll put in a name, we'll put a random play in. I've been playing, it just never saves my, I never go that far to save my character but we'll put some random stuff in. Also, the screen does have speakers. That's what's another great feature about the monitor, is that the monitor does have built-in speakers. I just have the audio low on this. So we could always bump up the audio right here, holding the function key. I could bump up Windows Audio, and we could play. So again, totally touch screen. I could play Golden T with the stupid tutorial, <laughs> with the touch screen, or, as Raj requested, he did want to play it using the trackball, which is pretty cool. And honestly, this trackball, it will fly. It's a very nice, smooth trackball. The only big thing when it comes to the trackball is you want to take your mouse, make sure you're at the top. You have to hold down the left click, pull back, and then launch. My keyboard is just too close to the screen, so I'm not going to risk punching the screen. I'll pull it back. Maybe we'll get another round in on that. We'll take the gambler hat. Why not? And we'll do it one more time. So I could double finger to spin the camera. We're going to make sure our mouse is right. Left click down and launch. And as you can see, I'm even getting the hook on it. Nothing with, I didn't touch anything here with the arrows. It is definitely recognizing everything about the trackball, just like your regular actual arcade trackball. And again, he found the keyboard. He goes, Vic, I want this. And I said, you said it, bro. You want it. We got it. So if I go here, I have to click on the curtain ball, apparently. Again, this is tutorial phase. And we're going to do it one more time. Boom. It's cool. Like I said, it's definitely an awesome thing. Not all the games will use the trackball. But as you can see with this, it does work. And not to mention, instead of you having a mouse and a keyboard combo, it's just one nice, simple setup. It's, it's definitely awesome. Good idea on Raj for that. Real quick, we will launch Temple Run. You did want to see some Temple Run. And again, with Temple Run, this is a vertical game. I just come to the side here. There is an option to spin. I can hit F11, and then I could turn my screen. Now, the only one thing about Raj that requested, he, we were going to test it. He wanted to see if you could use the trackball for Temple Run. And unfortunately, you cannot. The screen spins, but not the actual Windows interface. So if, I go, if I'm going up on the trackball, it's actually going left here. So it doesn't work as far as certain games going vertical. But the touchscreen does work, as you can see. So it's pretty cool. Even BlueStacks does have an option for external controls. As you can see, there's a space thing here. I'm going to remove that before I package this up. But as you can see, we're able to play. This right now is 24-inch vertical tumble run. It is awesome. It's, I, think it, I think it's so cool. And again, BlueStacks does have different options, different features. You could always remove the game controller. As you can see right there, I just turned it off. I'll go back to vertical, I remove the vertical, and I'll go full screen with F11, and we're good to go. So now we don't have that little space thing going on. But again, this is what Raj wanted, and there you have it. This is BlueStacks on the Ultimate Touch Edition.
So now it's cool, blue stacks again, and luckily with the stand, you could go from vertical to horizontal. You just gotta press F11, there's really no way around it. And then you just close out your app like you normally would. You got a lot of games, you wanna play some Call of Duty, you wanna play Mario Run. I will also be doing a tutorial as far as downloading paid games. So games that usually require $2, $4. This is one example, which is balloons. As you can see, we are playing balloons. And you could check it out on your phone, Apple device, Android device. This is a paid app, but I'm not gonna say all apps will work, but majority of them that are paid, you will be able to, if you really know how, and I'll show you how, you could basically get the um, games for free. Balloons is classic. This is kind of a weird take that they did. But we're playing some balloons. I was used to balloons where you kind of throw the dart, but this is like tower defense. Like this dude's gonna throw the darts. Very cool. Again, F11 to exit out. We're gonna hit this little tab here. Blue Stacks also did an update. Previously, there was tabs with each game, but now they did it like an actual Android phone where you gotta hit the home button and then it'll it'll show you all the lines. Another game, for example, Lego Marvel Super Heroes. This is another paid app running on Blue Stacks. And the screen is gorgeous. Alexa, turn off the basement light. Okay. Screen is beautiful on this. High resolution, the colors on it are awesome. It is an amazing screen, to be honest. And again, using the touch screen, it works great. My only thing about the stand though is that I did wish it had more of a tilt. It does pivot, you could go left and right. The actual thing spins, not the base. So the actual monitor will go left and right. It does have like a deeper down pivot but it doesn't have an up pivot. As you can see right now. I am playing some Lego Marvel. It's definitely cool, I can't see in the dark. <laughs> but there you guys have it, that is Blue Stacks. And as you can see, it launches fairly quick. If you're done playing Blue Stacks, we could just exit out and it'll bring us right back into the front end. Why not? We'll play some Pinball real quick and we'll load it up. So Pinball FX2, Pinball FX3, and again, the monitor with built-in speakers, that's, that's awesome. So I can do some single player. We'll play, I don't know, Jurassic Park. And again, Pinball is with the touch screen. No need for the keyboard and mouse. So we're gonna go here. And again, as you can see, it is awesome. Can't go wrong with it. Once done with that, we could exit out. And again, once you exit the game, it'll bring you back to the front end. The cool thing with this whole keyboard mouse combo is when it comes to some slot games that include, for example, roulette, you will need the keyboard and mouse. There are some games also that require you to type in your name. So you will always, for a touch edition, you will always need a keyboard at some point. I'll just show off real quick. As you can see now with this, I can't type anything. If I had a touch screen, I need the keyboard to put in my dollar amount. And now we could bet the max. Dud. <laughs> I ain't getting no love on this. All right, there you go, cool. And there you go, so the big thing when it comes to slot machine games, you just gotta kinda look at the corners to exit. So as you can see here, there's a menu button. I could exit here, and that's it, we're back. Now again, some of the slot games you do need a keyboard and mouse for. Really, a lot of the Hoyle Casino games, they will require a keyboard and mouse as you need to navigate the casino and such. So if you click along, you can just press play now. If you clicked on one of those boxes, it will open up the internet. 
Um, you could always exit out and come back. But as you can see here, let's do some roulette. So right now I'm okay, I'm navigating the screen using the touch screen, so that's pretty cool. There is one Hoyle game that like, it needs you to move around the casino as if you're a real person, which isn't too bad. Let me just lower the volume. So I'm V, what can I do? Let's do, I just wanna go all in. <laughs> we'll put 500 on red. Game case arcade logo is red. Let's go 500 on red. Oh, of course, <laughs> of course. So now the one thing you'll notice that not all the games are full screen, meaning stretch. A lot of these games are older. You're talking about like 2010, 2011. So resolutions then were this. So some games will be full screen. Mostly the PC games definitely are full screen. So again, kind of looking at the corners, you'll find ways to exit. Again, this is really just for the casino. If I go here and I could press exit, I'll press yes and we'll be back to the front end just like that. Very cool. Again, you could do pop cap games. Pop cap is just insanely fun, bejeweled stuff, diner dash, basic stuff, big fish games. Even now again, in the beginning, you do have it box emulation. That, this right here, one, two, three, four, is it box emulation. That is, a, it's, it's a company that is almost like a mega touch uh, I don't know what exact kind of region it box is. A lot of people do ask me if this is actually running real mega touch software. No, it is very similar to mega touch, but it is not mega touch software. So you do have card games. There is a lot of trivia games. I personally don't play a lot of these cause I'm just bad at trivia. Um, I'm not even going to bother with the trivia, but again, you do have a, a couple of Word games, the fun zone is where you're gonna find like the find a different stuff. There's even Fruit Ninja in this one too. So it's pretty cool playing on a touch screen like this. It's just, it's awesome. Play some Fruit Ninja. Fruit Ninja is old school. Like I feel like when I was in like high school, this was a big game to play. Choo. And you could always pause and we could always quit and exit. This really Fruit Ninja is an actual PC game but it's under like the fun zone area. Again, if I wanna go into PopCap, if I wanna do PC games, uh, we could play Angry Birds, we could do Monopoly if you want, and basically you just click a game and it'll launch. It'll go through its regular boot process. So this is an actual PC CD-ROM game. And as you can see, we're loading Monopoly and you just gotta let it go. Big thing is to understand again, PC games, they have ways of quitting and exiting within the game. You don't really press escape. Um, it's, it's not like main emulation where you press escape to go back home. You have to actually press exit inside the game. And again, I made, I put only PC games that work with touchscreen. Only games that will work with a touchscreen. So it's basically point and click style games. Sometimes you do need a double click, but it's basically acting as if it's your mouse. That's how it is. It's pretty cool. And as you can see, I don't need the keyboard. I could just exit out. Double click. Boom. What's cool is that it will bring you right back to the front end. Sometimes if it's different resolutions, you might have a couple of white blocks on the screen. You could either pick a different game or you could kind of guesstimate where the power button is. But other than that, it's just loads of fun. And again, when you're done playing, when you're done playing with touchscreen, you just press the power button in the middle and it'll bring you back to the Windows desktop. So you can go in, you can go to Firefox if you want, do your regular browsing and such. So again, it's not just a touch gaming setup, it's actually a real PC. I also have TeamViewer set on all my builds. This way, in case anything happens, I could always TeamViewer in. I always hide the taskbar at the bottom. So you could always grab the mouse and the keyboard and do all that. But in all honesty, that is it. That is the front end. So now again, like I was saying before, I made that video of the mega touch and the touch screen and the discovery of this Windows version. I got a lot of emails. 
I'm getting a lot of people that do want drives and all that, but the big thing that I can't stress enough is that you must be running a certain version of Windows, which is Windows 1909, 1909. The reason is because as you can see, the front end here uses Flash Player. And after 1909, I believe it was after like November, Windows did an update and removed Flash Player. If you Google it right now and you Google Flash Player, it is like dead. I forgot what they called it, but it's, it's dead, like deceased dead. You're not gonna find Windows Flash Player. You're not be able to download Windows Flash Player. The only way to get Windows Flash Player is to go back and have anything from Windows 1909 or before. So I do have a couple of people that are interested in getting the files, getting the drive, and then putting it to their existing Windows PC, but they're really not grasping this whole need for Windows 1909. The games will work. If you get a drive, the PC games will work, Pinball FX will work, but you will not have a front end. The front end will not work. The beauty that you see here, it won't work. If you do not have Windows 1909, this won't work which in my honest opinion, it deems it unusable. And it won't even launch the, 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 the structure of the front end. In the beginning, I thought it was not gonna, I thought it, you miss out and you lose the motion videos because this is Flash Player running these videos. But no, I've discovered that you will just get a 404 error trying to launch STFE. So again, I can't stress it enough. If you are looking for touch edition stuff, you need Windows 1909. I personally am the one that would rather receive your PC and do what needs to be done. The big thing to understand is that when I do this 1909, like this build, for example, I remove Windows Update, period. You cannot update Windows on it. I remove everything from auto Windows Update. I set even the restore points just in case, God forbid, it does update. There's a lot that goes on to these builds. That's why I'm personally the type that I would rather get your PC and do the work myself. There is no way to team viewer in and do 1909. You literally have to go do a search on how to get your Windows CD recovery to a USB drive. You have to go into the computer BIOS. You have to boot into the BIOS, boot into recovery mode, recover Windows, wipe Windows. Not to mention that when you do wipe Windows, the original Windows that was in this, it's white you lose all the drivers that are in this NUC. So you lose everything. And to get everything back, you have to be connected to the internet to download the drivers. And when you roll back and you're connected to the internet, Windows Update is downloading the Windows Update files. So there's, there's a lot going on. I'm not trying to sugarcoat, I'm not trying to stress the importance of it. But the big thing is, again, if you are looking for this kind of front end look, you do need Flash Player you do need Windows 1909. And there you guys have it, this is Project Dubai. I now have to take everything here, the boxes and everything, and put it into one big box. And I'm going out tomorrow to DHL. There's actually a whole international supply, uh, shipper company that's local to me. Basically, I'm gonna give them this box and say, hey, here's the address to Dubai. What is the price? And soon enough, this will be in Dubai.